you. We have not seen as you see. We have not loved as you love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We seek to live in Christ. We seek to live in the one who is graceful, the one who embraces us, the one who loves us. And the word of Jesus is that we are people in whom the Spirit of God dwells, and that we are people who are forgiven and accepted. It's one of my great privileges to proclaim the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace and love, let us pray to the Lord.
Let us pray together. O oh God, open our ears that we hear your voice. Restore our sight that we see clearly. Fill our hearts for rejoicing for the goodness that is through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 9. All this time Saul was breathing down the necks of the master's disciples out for the kill. He went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to take to the meeting places in Damascus so that if he found anyone there belonging to the way, whether men or women, he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. He set off. When he got to the outskirts of Damascus, he was suddenly dazed by a blinding flash of light. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice, Saul, Saul. Why are you out to get me? He said, Who are you, Master? I am Jesus, the one you're hunting down. I want you to get up and enter the city. In the city, you'll be told what to do next. His companions stood there dumbstruck. They could hear the sound but couldn't see anyone. While Saul, picking himself up off the ground, found himself stone blind. They had to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. He continued blind for three days. He ate nothing, drank nothing. There was a disciple in Damascus by the name of Ananias. The master spoke to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, master, he answered. Get up and go over to Straight Avenue. Ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus. His name is Saul. He's there praying. He has just had a dream in which he saw a man named Ananias enter the house and lay hands on him so he could see again. Ananias protesting. Master, you can't be serious. Everyone's talking about this man and the terrible things he's been doing. His reign of terror against your people in Jerusalem. And now he's shown up here with papers from the chief priest that give him license to do the same to us. But the master said, don't argue, go. I have picked him as my personal representative to non-Jews and kings and Jews. <coughs> so Ananias went and found the house, placed his hands on blind Saul and said, Brother Saul, the master sent me the same Jesus you saw on your way here. He sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. The Lord sets free those who are captive. The Lord gives sight to the blind. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. With their sincere hearts, they may turn to the ground. The Lord sets free those who are captive. The Lord gives sight to the blind. Blessed are those whose help and whose hope is in the Lord their God. God is the nature of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. The Lord, the Lord sets free those who are captive. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord reigns forever, our God for all generations. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall 
we go, you have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus left the house, he was followed by two blind men crying out, Mercy, Son of David, mercy on us. When Jesus got home, the blind men went in with him, and Jesus said to them, Do you really believe I can do this? They said, Why, yes, Master. He touched their eyes. Become what you believe. It happened. They saw. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May be seated. Phoebe is here. Do, 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 you, think, do you think Cleo's going to come down? I don't, I don't know whether Cleo's going to come down. She might not come down. Whoa, 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 we've got, we've got, whoa, 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 there's another, there's another, there's another child here. Yeah, I know. I think it's a little boy. Oh, yeah, I think it's a little boy. Two, there are two. Okay, we're going to sit down, Phoebe. We'll, we'll sit, we'll sit. Okay, I'm going to sit. Can you sit? I can sit. Hurry up, I'm going to, I'm going to try. Oh. oh, here we go, here we go. I'm Phoebe. What's your name? Walden, like Walden Woods. Oh, hi, Walden. Can you wave? <laughs> oh, and there's Cleo. <laughs> Cleo, 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 Cleo. How are you, Cleo? <laughs> are you good? Good. You got a friend there in, in Walden. What are you going to do with the candle? You know what I'm going to do with the candle, Phoebe? What are you going to do? I am going to light the candle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, he's moving back. Yeah, I know he's moving back. He didn't trust you. All right, don't light me on fire. I, okay, I won't light you on fire, but I'm going to light the candle. How are you going to do that with one hand? It's going to be hard. <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be real hard. Yeah. Why don't you ask for help? Can I get help from somebody? Yeah, Roy's going to help. Debbie's sitting right there, but Roy's <laughs> going to help. Right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. No, that's okay. Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. Why are we lighting the candle? You know why we're lighting the candle? Why is that? Because within us there is a light. Like within Cleo? Yeah, within Cleo there's a light. Like the candle, right? Within Walden? Yeah, there's a light. How about Walden's mom? Yeah, there, there's a light within her too. And you know when we get this light? Do you have any idea when we get this light, Cleo? What's a big day that's coming up? Whoa! Right. When you're baptized, you get a candle. And the words of Jesus are said that the light of God is in you. That is very cool. Yeah, I know it. It's very cool. And so what do you do with a candle? Well, you, you bring it home. Yeah. And then sometimes you light it to remind you <laughs> that the light of Jesus is in me. Right, that the light of Jesus is in you. So Cleo... Cleo's going to get a candle. Cleo's going to get a candle. And she can light it, right? She can light it. Well, maybe she doesn't light it, right? No, like maybe, well, maybe, maybe her parents light it. Yeah, her parents will light it. And that'll be a reminder. The light of Jesus is in her. The light of Jesus is in her. Very cool. Does Walden have a candle? We can get Walden a candle. We, we, we got candles. Yeah, we got candles. We got candles all over the place. Hey, we got candles all over the place. You got to be baptized to have one? No, you don't have to be baptized. You can have a candle. You can go back. <laughs> Bye bye, Walden. Bye bye. Bye bye, Cleo. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let, uh, we're going to go back to what we, where we were last week. Last week we read the story of Adam and Eve, 
And when story, we said in the story of Adam and Eve that we have a certain nature or inclination about ourselves. What is that inclination? Who are we likely to follow? Laura, you've got to remember this. You were here last week, right? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that smile on your face beneath the mask, Laura, and I just figured for sure. Who are we inclined to follow by nature? Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, and, and they eat the fruit, and it's a symbolic story, and so they eat the fruit. Why do they eat the fruit? They wanted to be like God. In other words, our inclination is to say, who comes first? Me. Me, right. Love it, Laura. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> right, so that's our self-interest, and that's, our, that's our, um, our selfishness that comes out. Yet, following, take, we've got to take care of ourselves. The problem is when that me instinct gets what? Key word here is excessive excessive so jesus comes and jesus says look I'm, I'm here to bring you abundant life well i have life i'm going to bring it to you in abundance whoa so jesus looks at us in essence and says i'm here to bring you to life and that step into life means living not out of this me centeredness but living in a Christ-centeredness. And when we live in a Christ-centeredness, hopefully that takes the edge off of that excessiveness so that I become concerned with other people at some level. But what really intrigued me is I said to myself, so what does it mean to live in Christ? What does it mean to live with that kind of centeredness? What does that really mean? And so what I want to do this morning is contrast some ways of understanding God. And the first way, this is what I think we, most of us have been raised with. It's really an understanding of God that's called supernatural theism. Theism refers to God. Supernatural refers to God having supernatural power. And so it's this orientation toward God that God is distant, that God is out there. And that God, has the, God is the Lord. God is the master. And if God is the Lord and God is the master, what does that make us? Servants. Yes, yeah, servants. And what does the servant have to do toward the master? What's the key dynamic here? If we're the servant of the master, what do we have to do? Obey. Obey. The master sets the rules. We obey and we obey. And when, when we obey and do what is right, we get the atta girl and the atta boy. And our understanding of God in this conception is that sometimes God, uh, we pray that God will use God's supernatural power to change things about life. Ultimately, this view is that God is in control, that God is the superpower that's in control of everything. And so people that are drawn to this view of God have a tendency to think that God has a plan, that God is in charge, that God is the master, that God is the Lord. I will be the dutiful servant and do what God requires or asks, and I'll get an attaboy or an girl, and I'll pray that God uses God's supernatural power to change things that upset me. That's kind of traditional Christianity, especially from the old days. Now, there are a few problems here. Typically, then, what happens is the church, as kind of God's representative, sets up, this is what you need to do in order to be the obedient, good boy or good girl following the master. So the church has all kinds of, I, in my mind, it's a kind of a cookie-cutter approach to the way in which we're supposed to be, the obligations we're supposed to meet, the things we're supposed to do. And if we do all that stuff, good boy. You're good. You're fine. (sighs) 
So here's some problems with it. I'm not certain, first of all, the whole idea of God having supernatural power and God controlling everything. First problem is, if God is supernatural power and God's in control of everything, why do we have so much suffering and so much hurt and so much pain in this world? If God is in control of everything, what was God's plan for 11 million people? That's, there's 600,000 people, I believe, that live in Vermont. 11 million people were killed in the Holocaust. That's, uh, what is that? 10, almost 20 times the population of Vermont. It's 20 times. Everybody in Vermont, 20 times. If God is, a, what's God's plan for all those people, if that's the case? If God's in control. So it really paints a picture. What about God's plan for those children that are in children's hospital that are, that are very, very sick? What? If God's in control. How do we understand that? So it really paints a picture out to God, of God as God being very vicious. I don't know how else you can describe it. I really don't. But we, some people gravitate to this concept that God has a plan for my life because what it does is it takes me at some level off. It, it, it gives me some consolation. It takes the edge off of my anxiety so that I can go forward. So, okay, if we don't understand God as having this kind of control power over everything that happens, does God interact with humanity. This is kind of an intellectual issue, but it's, it's significant. Does God in, interact with the, with the matters of humanity, if that's the case? Now, my suggestion to you is that God does interact with the affairs of humanity, but God does so through the natural laws that have been established. In other words, God is not capricious. So God works through your immune system. God works through, through the other natural, we could get into a long discussion about this, the, the, law, the other natural laws that we have, but God does not suddenly suspend gravity for, for Debbie so that Debbie can float and all the rest of us stay seated. That would be capricious. But God will act through nature. God will act through our emotions in our emotional connections with one another, that if we all love Sharon, that may so affect her being that her health may change. Okay? And that God may act through Sharon's, uh, through Sh through Sharon's body, through, through, the, through the interplay of your biology, but God's not going to bingo, just change things. That would be capricious. So God does interact with the affairs of humanity. Uh, so some people are drawn to this view of God. That's fine. What I'm suggesting to you is that we move out of this view of supernatural theism so that what we live in is an understanding of God that's slightly different, although rooted in Scripture. And that is not God as distant Lord and Master to whom we have to be obedient in order to be quote-unquote good, but rather perhaps we might understand God as being right here. Not distant, but right here. Consider it the beyond that is within. So that I might see God within you. I might see God within nature. That God is not distant in a way, but that God is right here. <laughs> that I see God in Walden. That I see God in Cleo. That I see God in Rome. <clears throat> and that I experience God's presence where I walk in the woods and see the beautiful nature. I mean, the snow on the hills has been glorious coming, coming to church today that I see God in nature and that I experience God. And sometimes I experience that presence of God even within myself. So this is a view of God that is 
the beyond which is within. And if God is within, within me, that place of peace is within me. I don't experience it many times because what do I do? The place of peace is within me, but I layer on top of it all of the anxieties and worries of life. But it's within me. It's within you. It's within all of us. But all this other stuff gets layered upon it. So what I, what I experience from day to day is not the peace that I have within me. I'm not living in Christ. You know, we get back to where I started. I'm not living in Christ. I'm living in these anxieties. You know, I've got to get taxes done. I've got to get to work. I've got to pay the bills. I've, I, I've got to handle the situation in the family. I've, I, I've, got, I've got to do this thing at work. I, I deal with all this other stuff. And the peace is buried. So in this dynamic, maybe the issue is not so much obedience to God way out there, but maybe the issue is, can I live with an awareness of God's presence? I don't see you, Debbie. I see somebody who's just judgmental and critical. And, oh, that, oh, that Debbie. Ooh. I don't see the presence of God in you. I see all that other stuff. Can I live with an awareness and drop that critical spirit in me <laughs> and see the beauty of who you are? Or am I blind to it? Now, what were the readings of today about? They were all about what? Blindness and who restores our sight? Jesus. Can I live in Jesus, in Christ, and see your beauty? Or do I get blind to the beauty and see through other lenses? So, the, the reading was... Christ restores our sight. Perhaps in restoring our sight, we can see the goodness in people. Instead of constantly nitpicking and finding fault. So then the issue for us is living in Christ and then living with awareness that that place of peace is within me. And perhaps what I really need to do is to release some of these anxieties and worries that can so preoccupy me. And I need to come back home to that place of peace because when I'm in that place of peace, I can see clearly. But when I'm living with all those anxieties and worries and all that other stuff, what happens to me? I have a tendency to live through those lenses and my patience level goes down. And do I see the goodness in people? No. Not as likely to see the goodness in people because I'm so caught up with all that stuff. So can I then live with greater awareness to live in Christ? Now, we'll get into this next week. We'll get into this next week. How do I stay in touch with living in Christ with that kind of awareness? Now, this is something that's really difficult to do. But one way in which we do that, I'm going to ask Bob and Pete. One way in which we do that is how? That's right. That's how am I, what can I do that might help? I'm setting you up. You guys are killing me. What, what can, Sharon, this is for you too. <laughs> you can't say, ha <laughs> ha. No, 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 this is for you too. What can I do that might help me see those things more clearly? What is one thing that I might be able to do or take on? Pray. Pray. What kind of prayer will help me? Ask, center my life more fully on Jesus. Meditation really helps. 
to see clearly. Meditation really helps to see clearly. What else might help us to see clearly besides meditation that goes on here in this church? I'm going to give you a hint. Every Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Tai Chi might help us Tai Chi might help us let go of some of those anxieties so that we can center on Christ. Singing. Yes, Singing for some people will help people let go of some of those anxieties to center on Christ. What are some other ways, other spiritual disciplines besides those? Gratitude. To a practice of gratitude will help change our focus so that we can see clearly. Maybe writing down three or four or five things a day that, do you do that? Writing down three or four or five? You try to, okay. It takes a lot of discipline to do these things. Exercise for some people will help them release some of those anxieties to live out of that place of peace. What else would help? Yes, gathering with people of like mind that provide encouragement will provide us a centeredness in Christ. Roy. Sometimes reading the Bible can be helpful to us in changing our focus to live out of Christ, right? My suggestion to you is you're your own spiritual manager. There is no cookie cutter approach. Tai Chi will work for some people, it won't for others. Meditation is attractive for some people, it's not for others. Exercise works for some people, not for others. Being with other folks may really boost you it may also drain you. <laughs> so it doesn't work. And so the issue here is to recognize that we're all, we're all made in the image of God. We're all different. Some people, I, I remember a woman I knew, she would quilt. And quilting was her way of releasing the anxieties to stay in Christ. You know what quilting would do for me? <laughs> yeah, drive me up a wall. But, but that worked for her. So we're all our own spiritual man. So the, the, the focus here, the, the, whole, the whole point I'm trying to make here is to be aware of this supernatural theism thing that a lot of us have been raised with. There are a lot of issues that it, that it brings to mind. I'm really drawn toward this understanding of God as God being in our midst, beyond, but also in our midst, in which case the real issue for us is living with an awareness to be able to see God's presence and to understand that that peace is there within us. Then those spiritual disciplines may help us to release the other stuff, to live out of Christ. Thank you for your attention. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to sing.
sight, that we may be grateful for this gift of life. Help us to see all that is good and beautiful. May we step lightly. May we smile broadly. May our hearts be at peace. Lord, in your goodness, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. O Lord, we are ever mindful of the temptations that abound. Give us the humility to see how easy it is for us to lose perspective. Inspire in us the discipline to center ourselves on your presence. Move us to be people of support and encouragement for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we are mindful of the people of the U Ukraine who live with such violence and in such danger. Bring peace, O Lord, to this land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, we are mindful of those who give so much of themselves to care for others. Teachers, public servants, those who work in hospitals and nursing homes, and those who care for their loved ones at home. O Lord, be their guide and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our church community, that this be a place of grace for all who enter these doors to worship. May we see your presence in ourselves and in one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, in the silence, we lift up to you the people that are dear to us, and we place them, Lord God, in your hands. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your presence through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God's peace be with you all. Please get about to share God's peace. Um, you, you, we, we, uh, are we passing the, oh, we are passing the offering. This is the second time we've passed the offering plate in like two years. This is great. So, uh, so we pass the offering plate, we will collect the offering, and then uh, while we collect the offering, we, uh, you may be seated, uh, we, the choir is going to sing.
Jesus, Jesus, forever the same. Your glory will be the bright and proclaim. Jesus, 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 we praise your name. Let us pray our offering prayer of thanksgiving together. Holy Lord, we have received grace upon grace. May our church be a community where we feel accepted and encouraged in our walk of faith. And may these gifts help our community to blossom. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, whoever you are in your walk of faith and wherever you are in that journey, you are welcome to receive communion at our church. You may commune through either, through either juice or wine. We also have gluten-free wafer. And we distribute communion around the uh, rail behind me. Please just take your place at the rail. And after you receive the communion elements, return to your pews for a time of prayer. Uh, so it's done continuously. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering the words that Jesus taught us, we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please come forward to the altar. Uh, red altar.
May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Our Lord is before us, and God will meet us in all of our tomorrows. May we have eyes open that we see God's presence. The Lord is beneath us, so when we stumble, God will be there to be our strength. The light of Christ shines behind us to dispel the shadows that we may be free. The Lord is above us where Jesus has prepared a place for us in God's kingdom. And may we live with the awareness that God is within us and there is peace within us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together. Uh, we'll sing the uh, first and the last verses. First and last verses of O Master, Let Me Walk With You. Master, let me walk with you in lowly paths of service true. To me, your sacred help me bear the strain of toil. The